Good morning, everybody. I hope y'all are having a great day. I'm Anthony, and on today's video, it is like 30 degrees outside. Uh, I'm feeling kind of froggy, so today we are going to be building an owl box. So, like I said, today we're going to be building an owl box. Uh, first things first, though, some of y'all are probably thinking, man, that is random as hell. Why the hell are y'all building, or why are you building an owl box? Well, let me be completely honest with you. What has been one of the biggest problems mankind has ever faced or has faced every single year of its existence? Storing food for the wintertime. Well, if you like to prepare, if you like to make sure you have a lot of stuff stashed in your house, what are you going to have a lot in your house? Stored food. Okay, so what is the uh, biggest enemy to storing food? Vermin. Mice. They get into everything. They can even chew through five-gallon buckets. So uh, you got to make sure that you're keeping that stuff safe. And one of the best ways to do that, sure, you can put up mouse traps and all stuff inside, but the idea is to make sure you're stopping the mice before they get inside your home. One of the absolute best ways to do that is to encourage chickens, to encourage predators. Action. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I have a couple predators around my house that I use to try to stop a lot of vermin, and that is going to be mainly cats. Uh, I have quite a few cats that do me a big favor and uh, they stop a lot of the mice, moles, voles, all that stuff for me so I don't have to worry about anything. However, uh, if you feed them as much as my wife does, they get kind of lazy every once in a while. Yeah, you got a couple of them that are really, really, really good mousers, but a lot of them are just lazy. They just hang out on the couch, or the couch, on the, uh, the porch over there. So, you know, those are kind of useless. They're just basically ornaments. But uh, little do people know, chickens are also very good at catching mice and uh, they look like little velociraptors when they do that. But that's a story for another day. But the main point of this video I wanted to try to get into is the fact that you want to make sure you're bringing in as many good predators as you can so you don't have to worry about uh, mice getting in your home because they're being stopped well before they get to that first wall. So uh, one of the best, most like hardcore hunters of mice is going to be an owl. Now the owl in particular that I'm going to be building a box for today is going to be the Eastern Screech Owl. This owl has a territory about east of the Rocky Mountains. If you live west of the Rockies, guess what? You have the Western Screech Owl. The reason why I like this owl so much is because it's very uh, it's compact. It's almost say small. It's not like a great horned owl that's, you know, humongous. It's about eight to ten inches tall, so uh, it's not very big. However, it is extremely good at hunting mice. It also hunts, you know, like small snakes, lizards, that kind of thing, but uh, when they hunt at nighttime, boy, things are very active at night. Mice. And uh, so you'll definitely be able to get a lot of your vermin problem taken care of if you bring in like a raptor. So one of the best ways to bring in that owl is to build a box. Uh, things like the great horned owl, whatever, they can kind of just take care of themselves and they'll be out in the woods, you don't have to do anything. However, the screech owl has had a problem with deforestation, especially with all the cities and suburbs popping up. Uh, so uh, the good thing is that owl has adapted very well, but being able to encourage a nest in your area will only benefit you. So that's exactly why I'm building this box. So uh, I went on the National Audubon Society website and I made sure to download uh, an image of the, an owl box that I'm going to build today. That way I can encourage them to be on my property. That image I will share with you right now. As you can tell, it is a very simple box, birdhouse, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this really doesn't take that much skill, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and give it a go. Probably going to take me maybe a few hours. Um, but it's basically all made out of a 1 by 10 by 8. Uh, I kind of, when I looked at the plans, I was like, you know, that's kind of BS. Ain't no way you can make it out of one, uh, 1 by 10 by 8. But you know what? I went to go ahead and bought one, and we're going to see exactly if it works or not. So. I'm going to go ahead and start building on this thing. That way I can get it hung up. That way these owls have enough time to find it before the nesting period at about the end of February to March in my location. Because obviously the farther north you are, the later it's going to be. But they usually nest around end of February, early March. So i got to get this thing hung up quickly so I can encourage them to you know, hang out here on my property.
All right, so now a quick tip for those of you who uh, are still kind of new to the whole carpentry thing or want to build stuff. Whenever you're dealing with, you know, really good grade wood or pine especially, that's thin, that's less than an inch, you got to watch out for splitting. I mean, even 2 by 4s will do this, where when you put a screw at the end and you cinch it down too much, it's going to split. So in order to avoid doing that, you drill what's called a pilot hole. You basically get a, this is a 1 8 drill bit. You find out where you're going to want to put your screw, and then you just go ahead and drill what's called a pilot hole. Then when it comes time to actually put your screw in there, the wood's not expanding so much it wants to break, so it just goes in no problem. Now I'm doing a hard mount real quick first before I glue everything, so I'm just using this so I can keep everything so I can drill out my pilot holes. But when I come back to actually cinch this thing down, I'm going to use a bigger drill bit here just to make sure that I can, what's called a countersink, so these screws will sit flush, cool? One thing I noticed during my mock fit was this little gap right here because I need to cut the angle right here so this lays flat. Same principle back here, I need to cut an angle in there so it lays up flat. Now this is just one of those like pet peeves of mine because of course I have to you know over engineer everything, but I don't like that gap, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and when I remove this to start the glue, I'm going to cut me a little angle right here, maybe a 13 degree angle since this is what this is at. That way this will sit flush on this and that will sit flush right there. Alright, so let me explain a little bit more about the countersink. See, these are the normal pilot holes I drilled. These are an eighth of an inch. Well, when you put a screw in there, you see how it's raised up like that? You don't want that, especially when you're trying to put it on something and especially if you are a uh, OCD person like me, like I'm legitimately, legitimately OCD so I want to make sure that is flush because that's just what I want to do so you get a cut what's called a countersink use a bigger drill bit on top of that smaller one to go down just a little bit that way the screw sits flush see the difference raised flush that is why you countersink just that little bit of fit and finish that the birds will appreciate yeah right Now that you got your hole cut for the front area, that way they can come in and out, you want to make sure you're putting something here on the inside for the little birds to grab onto so they can climb out the hole. So you can either cut kerf cuts, which are basically uh, you know, using a table saw, like a really shallow table saw, cutting straight lines like this, or you can do something like this. Just take some wire that you may have and put it right here. That way the little birdies got something to grab onto and climb their way out. So I'm going to put it like this. That way I can sandwich it between the two pieces of wood and uh, they can climb up and out no problem. But I'm just about done and the only thing I do now is put ventilation holes. I'm going to put four in the base and two on each side right here. Quarter inch drill bit. I don't really think it matters where. Alright, so I got the holes drilled. She's just about done. So uh, that's what she looks like all said and done with. Uh, the spring latch on the side is necessary so this doesn't come flying up. So uh, that way you can get in there and do what you got to do. 
Uh, one thing I learned for, or a couple things I learned from doing my research for this video, screech owls cannot make their own nesting material, so every year it'd probably be a good idea to put like pine shavings in here for nesting materials. So, uh, you know, like leaves, pine straw, something like that, but not sawdust. Sawdust will hurt their lungs, but like pine shavings like I would normally use for my chickens, I'm just going to throw that in there annually, make sure they got some form of bedding material. But, uh, yeah, that's basically all you need to do for the inside. And uh, oh, one thing I wanted to add is you don't want to put a perch here. Another thing I learned, uh, because perches uh, facilitate predators. So uh, squirrels or anything like that, they can jump in here and take over the box. Don't give them uh, the ability to get in here with a perch. So the little standard whatever perches that you may see, don't eat them. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I put that out here on the video. Uh, but yeah, I really like the way this thing turned out. Sure enough, all it took was a uh, one by 10 by eight. And I was able to make it, but uh, I'm going to stain this. That way it has a little bit more weather resistance because if you just put this thing up now, it probably only last a couple years, if that. So I'm going to go ahead and stain this with like a deck stain and let it dry uh, before I mount it to a tree or somewhere. Uh, you want to make sure you mount it kind of far away from something, uh, somebody you don't really walk by a lot uh, because they're kind of territorial and you don't want to just put in a very highly active area where you're walking back and forth because they won't nest there. So uh, if you put it out of the way, that's probably you know for the best. So I'm going to go ahead and stain. There you have it. She's mounted right up there. You want to make sure that when you are mounting this thing that it is facing somewhere like east, south, maybe even west definitely not facing north because you want to get this thing to have some sort of sunlight to, to warm the box uh, because let's be honest here they're going to start uh, nesting in February March so it's going to be still kind of cold so if you can give them a little bit of heat via the sun that's going to be great so uh, just keep that part in mind and also it is recommended that you keep them 10 to 30 feet off the ground I just split the difference and did it at 15 feet uh, in an area like I said that is not heavily trafficked I don't hang out on this side of the yard. The only thing I do is mow, and uh, that's, you know, well after the nesting season should be over with. So I'm not really too worried about it. They like to have a little bit of an open area where they can kind of just fly and swoop in. Um, you don't want to put it right up against another tree or something where they can't seem to fly in and out. So, uh, yeah. But I think I'm going to end the video there. If you learned something, please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And uh, if you would like to do any more further reading, I will make sure I put links down below in the description. Uh, that way you can, if you want to do this thing yourself or you want to learn more about the Screech Owl, uh, that would be fantastic. Because I think the more we know about this animal, the better we can try to take care of it and uh, take care of ourselves because we don't have to worry about mice hanging out on the property. But uh, yeah, like I said, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate my hard work. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next one, okay? Bye.